Good morning, everyone. Good to be in the house church today, the best day of the week. Amen. I'm glad that we have more brethren here this morning. But thanks for your sacrifices. God will bless you. Amen. Okay, thank you so much. Well, God is good. We had a beautiful uh, fellowship. Uh, I posted it on our Freedom Fire chat. Uh, we had a beautiful fellowship last night with former members, disciples of Freedom Fire. Uh, I think four couples got saved there 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago. So we have this close relationship through the years. And I'm still able to influence them up to now. So... Yeah, and they ask me serious questions all the time. So it's a, it's a beautiful opportunity to still impact their lives with the word of God. Amen. So anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, uh, we, had, we had a lot of deep discussions. Amen. And last night, I couldn't really sleep until 3 o'clock in the morning because my brain was so active. Amen. Uh, oh, the, our discussions, the deep things, the deep questions still keep running and running in my mind. Amen. One one brother asked me, uh, how is it that pe some people, they go to church and, you know, if it's true that not everyone is, is going to get saved, how is it that they're going to church and their lives are not being changed, their eyes are not being opened, right? That's a good question, right? <clears throat> Amen. And uh, one of them suggested, because they don't know what a house church is. One of them suggested, sincerely, that, you know, Pastor, uh, you're old now. You're about three times. And why don't you just help your, your disciples find the, the traditional church buildings, right? The traditional churches, and so they can join that church. Well, it really depends on the Lord, you know. Uh, obviously, they don't have a good understanding of what a house church is. Uh, if you look at history, the world was conquered by house churches. Uh, in the book of Acts, there were no buildings, traditional buildings. And, you know, our, our two churches in the Philippines, in Samar and Pangasinan, Asingan, are meeting in house churches. You know, in the third world, poor countries, there's a lot of house churches. Or even churches under the tree. Okay? Not even house under the tree. So the world was conquered through house churches. <clears throat> Amen? Because we have the idea that, you know, because in the past 30 years, all our lives, we have this idea that the church is a building, right? So if you're inside a building, you have a better... Uh, growth, better programs, but we know that's not the case. Uh, I believe in my heart there's better discipleship in a house church, and and I told them that well, you haven't experienced a house church. We we have a tight relationship. We enjoy like in the Book of Acts, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching in the house. They shared their food with gladness. Amen. They helped one another. They prayed one, for one another. And they celebrated the communion table. They broke bread. And the Lord, you know, added daily those that are being saved. More The house churches began to spread, right? That's the pattern in the book of Acts. So, yeah, we, we, we have, you know, we don't have problems with burnout, you know, cleaning the building, a mega building, and taking care of maintenance and paying large bills. And... Not a lot of janitorial kitchen work. If people got burned out because of the kitchen work, cleaning work. So yeah, uh, obviously they, they don't have an idea what a house church is all about. So, but hey, we have house church and the power of technology. We are being followed in Samar in the Philippines. So God is good. Amen. So really when... I think about Paul who spent the last two years of his life in a house church before he was executed. Two years he was in a house church under house arrest. 
and people came to visit him. And he welcomed them and he taught them the things concerning the kingdom of God. So God gave him two years of, well, visitors coming to him. And there were benefits because the Bible says no one bothered Paul, no one stopped, prevented Paul from preaching the gospel. Because, you know, if you look at his missions work, wherever he go, the persecutors followed him. The mobsters, the mockers followed him and dragged him, throw stones at him, beat him. But hey, in a house church, there were guards. They can't beat him in a house church. There were guards guarding him. And people come safely and secure. No riots. Amen? See, God knows what he's doing. Amen? And for two full years, I believe many people heard the gospel of Jesus Christ in a house church. So there, you can't really compare a house church with a, church, a building church because a church can happen anywhere. Amen? So praise God. So anyway, that's my answer. <laughs> and really, you know, if God evolved us into a house church, well, if we spread in the Philippines, it will be house churches too. Uh, I don't think we should pay a lot of money for the building. Amen. If they can't afford a building like Balogo, that's not going to stop the, the church from growing. Uh, you're not stuck. The, the advantage of a house church is you're free you're to go. If you have a building, you're stuck with a building. You have to take care of the building, bills, energy. If you have a house church, you can do it any house. Amen? So it has some advantages and disadvantages. Remember, the kingdom of God is the poor, not the building the poor. We are the kingdom of God. Amen. We are the church, the people. Not the building, not the programs. Amen. So God has changed our strategy after 30 years. Amen. The, the important thing is you go, you come here, you are growing, you're being fed with solid food, your faith is being built up. And if the effect is good on you, then you go where, where, where you're growing. Like a vlogger girl in Tondo went to Tondo because she loves to eat the food there. It's been in business 40 years, 30 years. Tonto, you have to walk through the uh, Iskinita just to eat the, their food. Eating the banqueta, carindiria. Hey, the food is what sustained them for the business for 40 years, 30 years. Amen? There's nothing like it. So yeah, we can have a, a house church in the Iskinita. In the back lane, amen? In the backyard. In, in, what is important is the food, amen? Praise God. So today we're going to learn new things about the Word of God. Brother Artemio, special shout out, he's been following us since then, since we visited him to pray for him. He's been following us, praise God. Maria Teresita. Maria Teresita is online. Special shout out to Pastor Todd, following us every Sunday now. Pastor Proel following us. And the, another advantage is we're providing good basic theology to pastors in the Philippines who, have, who needed it. Amen? <clears throat> who needs a good foundation. Amen? So, so today we're going to study about, our title is How Do You Know If You Really, really Love Jesus? How do you know if you really love Jesus? Amen. Let's go to John chapter 14, verse 21. Chapter 14, verse 21. John. Jesus said, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Okay, Judas said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. And 
He who does not love me does not keep my commandments, my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Open our eyes to answer this question. How do we know if we really love you? <laughs> Open our eyes to receive from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Jesus gave the answer. Okay? How do you know if you really love him? Jesus Christ. Jesus said, he who has my commandments, verse 21. He who keeps my word. He who has my commandments and keeps them, applies them, practices them. It is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. I will love him and I will manifest, I will reveal myself to him. Amen. So that's the answer. The person who loves Jesus is one who hears the word, believes the word, and obeys the word. He keeps the word. He keeps the commandments of God. Amen? Keeping the commandments. We have Brother Al here, so give, make room for them. Well, maybe we can take more chairs, brother, in the room there. Come in, brother. There's one more there at the back. No problem, brother. I think I the second floor. Ah, here, we have room. No, no problem. We can give you more chairs. Are you uncomfortable there? Or do you need a stronger chair? Okay. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. We're just starting. Yeah, we just started the word. The title is How Do You Know If You Love Jesus? But Jesus said, This is how you know. If you keep my word, if you obey my commandments, you are the one who loves me. Okay. Then Jesus also said, He who does not love me does not keep my words. Verse 24. So if, you, if you're not obeying the commandments, the word of God, you do not love him. Okay? It's as simple as that. It's it's straightforward answer from Jesus. If you love me, if you keep my commandments, I and my Father will love you and I will reveal myself to you. Verse 21. I will reveal myself to you. Amen. Okay. So let's examine our hearts. You know, what kind of, I was asked by a brother, yes, last night in our fellowship, uh, because we, we both believe that not everyone who goes to church, even though you've been in church 10 years, it is possible that, you know, we know, we're not trying to judge, but when it comes to keeping the word, it is easy to spot who is a true Christian, right? This question is, how come people go to church and they're still the same person, right? Their eyes, they're still blind. Their eyes are not open. Uh, you know, if Jesus said that wait, the, the wheat and the tares will grow together and not everyone who, who calls him Lord, Lord will be saved, right? Jesus will say to them in Matthew 7, I never knew you. And yet they they will say, what about our participation and membership? What about the things we did? What about our religious good works? Well, the answer, if I would elaborate Jesus' answer even more, it's not really your baptism certificate on the wall. When you were a baby, we all have that, right? 
and we were told by our parents, you're a Christian, right? <laughs> it's not really joining a church, going to a church, or because people can go to church for different reasons, right? But Jesus said, those who obey my word, they are the ones who love me. Amen? Those who keep my words, they are the ones who love me. That's the answer. That's how you know if you are a true Christian. Amen? Are you keeping his word? And we will be tested, you know. The journey, our Christian journey will not be easy. There will be testings, tribulations, trials, persecutions. But those who love Jesus will walk with him, will follow him, obey him until the end. Amen? Praise God. So being a Christian is about knowing Jesus and keeping his word. Being a true Christian is about knowing Jesus and keeping his word. Amen. In fact, there are warnings in 1 John that, you know, if you say you are walking in the light or you have fellowship with Christ, let me read that quickly. 1 John. Sorry to flip this Bible. First John. First John chapter 1, verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with Jesus and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Chapter 2, verse 4. He who says, I know him, I'm a Christian, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So again, same words. John is saying the same words as Jesus, right? It's all about keeping the commandments. If you are really in the light, if you really know Jesus, if you really have fellowship with him, you will keep his commandments. If you're not keeping his commandments, John said you're a liar. Well, that's pretty straightforward. So that's how you know, okay? So what are those, what are more proofs? Another question I want to ask is what are more proofs that you are really, uh, the truth is really in you, you know, that, that you are really a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, so first, first you know it by your obedience. Then there are two more things in the passage in John. How you can know that you are a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus said in verse 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit. Amen? Whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Amen. The helper, the Holy Spirit. I will give you the Holy Spirit. He will come to you and he will teach you all things. He will even remind you everything that I have said to you. Amen. Amen. In other words, the Holy Spirit will always be there to remind us about sermons you have heard last week, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Things that you have heard here. The new scriptures that you have heard from me, from the Bible. New explanations, new, new insights, illuminations. It will stick around for a long time. You know, when I'm preaching, I don't know where my ideas are coming from. That honestly, uh, I just soak myself with the word, and when it's time to preach, I just know that the Holy Spirit will be there to inject ideas into my mind, yes, right? Yes. <clears throat> so scriptures that I never included in, in my preparation will pop, right? So that's how you know the Holy Spirit is in us. He the Bible, Jesus said He is the teacher, He will teach you all things. He will teach you all things. He will guide you, protect you from error, from satanic doctrines. Yep. 
In fact, you will never be deceived. If you really have the Holy Spirit in you, you will not be deceived by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Kibulo is a Filipino cultic false teacher who has a very large international church but claiming he is the son of God the appointed son of God who replaced Jesus Christ thousands follow him yeah. and now he has a big case yeah. human trafficking and sex scandal yeah so in the Philippines and in the US so God is exposing him. You, and yet, you wonder how people believe him and how they follow him and work for him. If you really have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God will warn you, convict you. He will teach you this is error. Yes. He will lead you to all truth. That's what Jesus said. He will teach you all things. He will lead you into all the truth. He will protect you. He will guide you. He will illuminate you. From damnable doctrines, satanic doctrines. Amen? Anything you hear that is from Satan, that is twisted scripture, that's what cultic false teachers do. They twist the Bible. You will know it. That this guy's twisting the word. Amen? They knock here all the time. <laughs> the JW is they, this, this is their favorite house. In the neighborhood. Because one time I interacted with them and they kept me on their system and they keep following up. But I already know what they're going to say. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit will protect us. Amen. Yes. Amen. So that's it. Amen. Also, the Holy Spirit is not only your teacher, He will convict you of sin. That's what Jesus said. When the Holy Spirit comes, He will convict the world of sin. John 16. Verse 8, and when he has come, the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of sin. Amen. Of righteousness and of judgment. Spirit of God will convict you. Amen. Uh, that, that came out last night in our fellowship. How do you really know if you're a, a true Christian? And, and Brother Joel gave me the right answer. You know, I believe, I believe the Spirit of God will convict you. That's a good testimony. Amen? I know that brother. He got saved under a ministry more than 20 years ago. I know his weakness. He hates traffic. <laughs> Sometimes he, his temper is short. I know it. We played basketball together in the 90s. And there will be arguments sometimes about playing, right? <laughs> but he said, I, I like what he said, but you know, when I'm driving and somebody cut me off and, and I'm upset, after a few seconds, the Spirit of God is already bothering my conscience. That's how you know. Amen? Because the Spirit, when He comes, when He's in you, He will convict you of sin. So, so those who do not obey the Word, those who are sinning without conviction, they don't have the Spirit of God. Yeah. Look at Judas. Here's a, a very good example. Uh, a disciple of Jesus, Judas, who does not have the Holy Spirit and who is not saved. But he is considered by the 12, the 11, as a disciple, a brother. <laughs> But the Bible says he's the son of destruction, perdition. Oh. He never really got regenerated or born again because the Spirit of God was not in him. But he, look at his question. Lord, how is it that, you know, you reveal yourself to us, including himself, to us, but not the world. So he really thinks that if you are with Jesus, if you're Part of the group, you are a Christian. Okay? That's why he thought, I'm, I'm a member of the elite club. <laughs> I'm one of the 12. We eat together. We walk together. We... But there are things he doesn't understand. Jesus is not his personal Lord and Savior. Yeah. Right? 
he really did not see Jesus as the Messiah because his mind, his eyes are still blind. Right? Just like a regular Jew, Jesus is not their Messiah. They're still waiting for their Messiah. And then he's, you know, but there's, there's many more bad indicators. He was stealing money, right? He said to the, the poor woman, he said to Jesus, why don't we just sell this expensive perfume and use it for the ministry? It sounds Christian, right? But he's stealing it. But he's not, he's not, he, his conscience doesn't bother him because he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. He's not saved. In fact, he was the betrayer, the one who would betray the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. So, you compare him. Enough money. But I love those punchlines, you know. Those punchlines, amen? Straight to the point. That's how they're knowing me in some art. The pastor who speaks straight to the point. And they love it. Praise God. More followers. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, so, you know, Judas sounded like a Christian. He was with Jesus. Sounded, confessed, talked about good works. But he's not saved. He doesn't have the Holy Spirit. The helper was not with him. His eyes were never opened. Because if the Spirit of God is in you, your eyes will, remember what Jesus said, he will teach you all things. So that means when you read the Bible and you, before you, you had a hard time understanding the Bible, right? Before you got saved. Magulo, it's very vague. But now how is it that when you read, you feel like God is really speaking to you, straight to your heart. You know, you have you know, tons and tons of revelation that are being revealed to you. And you cry, you weep, you think about Jesus all day. That was my experience when I got saved. I was so hungry with the word because 25 years, I never read the Bible. 25 years of my life. I got saved at 26 years old. So every day I read the Bible. And I really felt God was speaking to me. For the first time, I had received the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So, the helper, that's how you know an inner proof of salvation, uh, an inner proof that you are a true Christian, is the Holy Spirit has been deposited to you. Amen. Jesus sent you, that's why Jesus said, I will send you the Holy Spirit, the helper. So, we have the Spirit of God. To convict us, to protect us, to guide us, to encourage us, to strengthen us. Amen. To convict you when you are sinning, to guide you, to give you wisdom. Amen. Give you wisdom. Amen. You know, I believe we're living in difficult times, but the Holy Spirit will give us signs. Signs. What to do? Amen? We're living in difficult times. But the Spirit of God will give us what to do next. He's like our coach. He will give us cues, you know, signs that it's your turn. It's the time. This way. That way. You will never uh, you will never grasp in the dark. Mm. the spirit of God will be there to lead you especially in these difficult times amen we have a very uncertain world the, the risk of world war 3 inflation you know high, highest cost of living the spirit will give us wisdom cues on how to survive this amen. economy amen, yeah. amen? Yeah. He'll give us wisdom. Yeah. that's part of his ministry okay Second sign, or the third sign, first, you're, you're keeping the word. Second, you have the Holy Spirit. And the third, the third sign Jesus gave is the peace of God in verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. 
Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. Peace I leave with you. Do you have the peace of God? If you really know Jesus legitimately, you have the Spirit of God, you're obeying the Word, you're genuinely saved. Another sign of genuine discipleship too is the peace of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? You will have peace. That's how you know you're a Christian. You have peace in the midst of difficulty, disaster, illness. Amen? Jesus said, I leave you my peace. I give it to you. This is not this, you know, this is not something that the world can give you. Okay? Not as the word gives. That's what he said in verse 27. In fact, in another verse here in, in the gospel, Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation. And that, that's somewhere in John. In the world you will have tribulation. Amen? I think that, that one, I found it, John 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, troubles. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So the world cannot give you this peace. The false teachers, Kibuloi, cannot give you this peace. Cultic, fake messiahs cannot give you this peace. You know, if you're, it's obvious to spot a cult. If Satan is operating there, there will be chaos and destruction in people's yep. lives. Yep. Just like Kibuloi's victims now coming forward, you know, in the Philippines. In a Senate hearing led by a lady senator, uh, probing, investigating the scandals and sex abuse witnesses talking in public, you know, revealing the hidden secrets of that. Because if Satan is operating there in that cult, there will be no peace. Yeah. Just chaos and destruction. Yeah. That's how you know if you're in the wrong church too. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And yet you will never see these things because you're deceived. You're deceived. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But, you know, yeah. But Jesus said, my peace I give to you. This is not the same peace that the world has. You know, the hippies in the 60s, peace man. I was a nine-year-old listening to Santana, Woodstock. I was 11 years old. And I remember the hippies in our res residence in our neighborhood in Paranaque, Philippines. Long hair, bell-bottom jeans. Peace man. That's not peace. <laughs> There's no peace in drugs and marijuana. <clears throat> Amen? There, there's no peace in sexual revolution. In long hair. There's no peace in that. In rock and roll. There's no peace in that. In the world, Jesus said, you will have tribulation. Yeah. Yeah. By the time I was 15, I was one of them. <laughs> in the 70s. Yeah. You know, I was 15, 16. I was giving my dad severe high blood and headache. Yeah. I was also saying, peace, man. Smoking weed. Amen. But anyway, <clears throat> that, but he said, my peace, I leave with you. Amen. Amen. This peace is not dependent on surroundings. On your surroundings. You can be in Gaza. In the midst of war. Northern Israel. Ukraine. And still have this peace. Amen. Because it's the peace of Jesus Christ. That's why. Philippians chapter 4. You know Paul said. This, this is the peace that passes all. Human understanding. Amen. Philippians 4.6. I believe you want to write that down. Jesus said, do not be worried. Do not be anxious. 
Do not worry about the economy, about the mortgage rates. Do not worry. Amen. The peace of God will guard you. And the peace, the perfect peace of God that passes all human understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's Philippians 4, 6. Do not worry. Do not be anxious. And then in verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, the peace of God is guarding my mind and heart. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Yeah. The peace of God is guarding my mind and heart. Amen? Therefore, I should not worry. That, that's when, before I slept at 3 o'clock, 3.30, almost 4, that's what I, that, that's my, that was my conclusion. Do not worry. The peace of God will guard you. Your mind. Because God knows the future. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God is not dependent on unemployment, mm -hmm. health, mm -hmm. illness. You can be dying and be peaceful. Amen. Because you can already see angels in your deathbed. Just like Stephen. You know, he looked into heaven and he saw an angel welcoming him. Before he was stoned to death. So he died with a big smile. Stephen, in the book, the first Christian martyr. Amen? True. So remember that. That's how you know God is in you. There's Holy Spirit conviction. And then the peace of God is with you. Even though he just went through hell in life. Whatever it is. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So do not be, do not let your heart be troubled. Do not worry. Do not worry. Do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last night we talked about a lot of things last night. You know, Brother June, remember in Montero, he works at Van City. So he knows a lot about investment and Banking. He also knows a lot about scams, how they operate, right? Because that's his job. So he was there working with his computer while with us, working from wherever you are. <laughs> it's a good job, eh? But anyway, he said, well, the, it came out in our discussion that, you know, some people were, because, you know, the current economy, right? Last year, the rates went up to 6%, right? below two to six. And because they renewed four years ago, after four years, they renew again at 5%. And I heard that many lost their homes. Yeah, They have no choice. Their, yeah. their payments increased by $5,000. And I said, if that's happening today, if we're renewing today, it's 5%. So if you're 1.8, 1.5 to 5%. You can't afford your townhouse anymore, Brother Gilbert. If you're renewing today. So that kind of bothered me. And I thought about that. Mm -hmm. And I thought about so many things last night. <laughs> but he gave me an idea that you can negotiate with your bank. Uh, pay interest only. Mm -hmm. right? That means your mortgage principal will not go down. Mm -hmm. But you have your house. Oh, that's a good idea, right? It can be negotiated and maximize it to 30 years again <laughs> <laughs> to bring it down. 100 years. Oh, yeah, but you know what? I settled with, you know, God knows about all these things, right? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God has a reason for yeah. economic, the economic hardship, the war in Gaza, right? The war in Ukraine. God has a purpose for that. Yeah. And God's plan cannot be hindered by those obstacles. We know that. Right? In fact, God is using those obstacles, those situations to accomplish his will, right? Yeah. And this is how I conclude. God saved us from our building in the U.S. God's going to save us here. Amen. 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 Yeah. So but that's still 18 months from now. September 1, 2025. Remember my faith. If it's not God's time, 
nothing can die, including yourself. You cannot die ahead of your time. Amen? You got healed from cancer in 2009, both of us, the same year. We're still here. Thank you, Lord. Amen? We believe this is the house God gave us in 2004. We checked about five houses here. Winter. <laughs> With my three small kids, we were buying in the winter. <laughs> Cheaper. So our, our realtor was impressed. These are serious people. You know? <laughs> Moving in the winter, December. And we moved in March after the funeral. Because God saw this house church. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. So nothing can die ahead of your time. Yeah. Another question came up because Pastor. Nar, Filipino pastor, Lighthouse Fellowship Missouri, passed away recently. They celebrated his life in January. And according to Joel, a lot of former members came, former members came to respect him. He's been a pastor for maybe 20 years here. But anyway, I was asked this question. Remember, there were our disciples too, right? They got saved in our ministry. I was asked by Brother Joel again, how come when we pray for someone who is sick, how come even though a lot of Christians are praying, they still die? <laughs> it's a good question, right? Yeah. I feel like you're making me another Jesus, you know? <laughs> you should ask Jesus straight. But I try to give a a good answer, right? Of course, I really believe, you know, the sovereignty of God. God is at a point in time. He makes things beautiful in his appointed time. There's a time for peace. There's a time for war. There's a time to die. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. Mm -hmm. So when it's your time, the whole world, the whole a thousand house churches can be praying for you. If God has decreed that I want you in paradise. No. No. That's it. You are the luckiest person on earth. Because you are leaving every one of us who are still stuck with the same problem. <laughs> the same yeah. concern. What will happen with the interest rate? <laughs> what will happen and you're in heaven. with her job, with my health? I'm, I was diagnosed with Cancer. Mm. We're, you know, we're praying for a brother who got diagnosed. I'm not mentioning names because I don't know if he's bringing this up in public or not. But it can be aggressive. Yeah. When it's your time, like Pastor Nar, after five years, the Lord took him. Amen. Yeah, that's life. So be ready for that too. Amen? So, nothing is permanent in this world. That's what I believe. Nothing is permanent. Our jobs, even ministries and churches are not permanent. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Amen. I was going to say something I forgot. I lost my train of thought. So, we will have peace in the midst of all of this. Rest your faith in God. He is in control. I really believe God has a reason why we lost our building. I really believe that with all my heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. It is possible that a lot of pastors in the Philippines would want to operate under our banner. Yeah. But there's no guarantee of financial support. No, you can't give money to every pastor who wants to join us. But there will be partnership. They will learn from us online. Remember, they need teaching. Yeah. Whatever we can afford. If we can afford one box, that's it. It's not, I'm not promising that support to our churches will be extended for another 20 years because I could be dead. You will be dead by then. 
So nothing is permanent. Yeah. That's why I'm training. When I talk to pastors in the Philippines, I always say you have to be prepared. We will do our best to help you the longest time possible. But you know, I'm getting old. My members are getting old. <laughs> old. Not getting old. old. You have to. <laughs> old. <I'm sorry. laughs> old. The Spirit of God must lead you. Amen. 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 <laughs> because if God really ordained that you continue many, many more years after we are gone, mm -hmm. God will provide for you. Amen. 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 You have to think of how to grow. Yeah. Grow old. Actually, that, what, Pastor Tani, this was a difficult decision for us because Pastor Tani started in Aristo in their neighborhood. But the problem is the church could not survive there. Mm. But I was thinking of what is best for the kingdom, not what is best for her hometown or her relatives and aunties. What is best for the kingdom and where God is leading us? Yeah. So when they ask me, Pastor, of course, this is consultation. Are we going to move to town center? The Lord led us there. And if we stop supporting Tani now, I think they can survive. See, the problem with her hometown is people are, they couldn't even pay the tricycle to go to Pastor Tani's church. There was a time we sent money for tricycle. So they can be fetched to town. We can't do that forever, right? So I really don't know. Yeah. But even if I continue my mission in the Philippines, wherever the Lord leads me, that's where I will go. Mm -hmm. okay. City centers and meet the pastors there. Yeah. Am I going to go to the Mountain. deep jungle? <laughs> They can do it better than me, right? Yeah. Meet 10 pastors in town, have lunch with them, mentor them. So strategies can change, right? Because the Spirit of God will give us cues, signs. You know, just like a, someone with a stop sign. <laughs> if the Spirit stop. says, stop. stop. This way. Well, the Spirit did that with Paul. In Acts 13, you can't go there. You can't go to Asia. You can't go to this region. Straight ahead. He ended up in Macedonia. Yeah. The birth, the start, the Philippian church began in Macedonia. You know, when, where the jailer got saved. Remember the jailer? So that's how the Philippian church. So yes, we can have peace. We don't know where we're going in 18 months, to tell you honestly. But you know, 18 months, they're predicting interest rates will come down a little bit. But it may still be 4%. Or that means from 2, I'm jumping to 4. These things can bother you, to tell you honestly. These things can cause you to lose your sleep. You know what? I have to put this in the hands of God. Amen. Amen. God knows I want to preach the word. I want to, well, extend my ministry in this house church. Let's leave it in the hands of God. 18 months, we can have World War III, or it's useless to renew anyway, right? Because there'll be nuclear blast everywhere, right? Fallout. Massive deaths by millions, billions. Or, you know, God, there can be the Israelites and the Philistines can all be saved and worshiping God in one building, right? The Palestinians and the Israelites. Anything can happen. It's up to God. Now it came back to my thought memory again. Thank you. We discussed this last night. This is what Brother June told me. That's why I got scared until 3 o'clock more. He said, you know, let's enjoy this all. That's why we gather. Because some of us are then seniors too. Right? Brother Marty's 65 next year. I'm 63. Well, anyway, 
Brother June, the banker, said, you know how our lives can change with one phone, phone call? Just one phone call. Your whole life will change. A brother already told me that, and when we prayed for him, he was crying. One phone call, something is wrong with your cells. You have cancer. Your whole life will change. Amen? Just one phone call. That's why every, every time we have blood work, uh, ultrasound, <clears throat> uh, x-ray, whatever, Gina had the carotid ultrasound here because she had mild aneurysm here. Like when the arteries are thickened because of plaque, uh, what you call it, plaque, not plaque, plaque, buildup of fats. That can kill you. But my wife said, oh, I saw my blood just right flowing straight. I saw it on the screen. There was like a water hose. Praise God. We should be ready for that too. You know, we can have the, that's why every time, every year, let's just rest in peace. I'm going to be healthy this year. Amen. God's going to provide all my needs for 2024. Amen. I will be peaceful. Even if difficult tribulations, problems happen, you know, the peace of God will be in me. Amen. Yeah, I realize that. How your life can change. You know, we're, this is a crazy group last night. Then we talk about what we, we would do if we become widows. Will you remarry? Will you marry? And our wives were just listening to the men's conversation. Yeah. So one sister said, yeah, I will marry. <laughs> well, it's good to be open sometimes, right? You know how, how death of a husband can change your life? Uh, a loss of a business? Ah, we're just one inch away from that. I believe with God is still in control of those things. Amen. He can prevent you from dying before your time. Amen. That's what I believe. We got healed Amen. of cancer, kidney, and breast. We got healed. But 2009, that was 15 years ago. Hmm. But you know, another hard conversation is as we age into our 70s. <laughs> You got to be ready for that one diagnosis. It happened to my mom. It happened to my dad. We just can't prevent it. You know why? Because we have an appointed time. We're not going to be here eternally. <laughs> right? That is why do not wait for that before you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your life now. Enjoy the house church now. Enjoy, enjoy what the Lord has the Lord has given us sunshine for us to refresh and to hear the word of God, to fellowship. I'm glad I'm glad Brother Al is here. Welcome to our house again. Family. Your second time. Praise yeah. God. So yeah, do not lose your sleep. Worries about many things. Yeah. Philippians 4 says, do not worry, do not be anxious about anything. In prayer, but in prayer, with prayer and supplication, let your request be known to God. Amen. And then verse 7, and the peace of God. Amen. So at 4 o'clock, I was peacefully sleeping. <laughs> My disciples kept bombarding me with difficult questions, difficult discussions. Widowhood, getting diagnosed, getting that phone call, getting remarried, mortgage tripling, doubling. <laughs> By the time you go to bed, it's still running in your mind. You know? Oh man, what's going to happen? You know, that's true. What's going to happen? Remarried. So at four o'clock, I can... three o'clock, I went down just to eat a little bit so I can sleep. <laughs> eat our, our to go lugao. So I can go to bed because I was bothered. So, so yeah, we will have peace. 
even in time of war. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus conquered the world. Amen. I have overcome the world. It's the world who, we, who will give us trouble, but Jesus said, I have overcome the world. So God has overcome the economy, yeah. the Bank of Canada, yeah. Russia, <laughs> Hamas. God has overcome the, the things in the world that's giving us trouble. Yes. You know, the Yemen is, you know, attacking with missiles, shipping, you know, commercial shipping. You know how, how it will impact the price of commodities? We can have another hike. Amen? Price hike. But you know, Jesus said, do not worry about these things. I have overcome the world. Amen. 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 He's our peace. He's our helper. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you that we are in we are in your hands and you are in control. We shall not be afraid of cancer. We shall not